Are we on Facebook? Okay, why don't you start Instagram? This is so exciting. Setting up meeting, and then I will start letting people in. It says it's now live on Facebook. Yay. Okay, and Instagram. Sweet. We are getting this going. I am so excited. Everybody's logging in. Welcome, everybody. Um, everybody's camera and microphone should be muted. So that's all working. Great. Um, and we'll talk about, go ahead and just, we're going to keep cameras and microphones off for this part because we um, have a bunch of slides to show and stuff like that. But hi, welcome. Um, so fun. I see names I recognize and new names and it's so exciting. Mm -hmm. This is also, we just got it up and running, going on Facebook and Instagram right now. And I feel like a tech wizard, but really it's my daughter. She set it up. <laughs> Thank goodness for teenagers. Um, okay, cool, cool. Very good. All right. So welcome. Um, let's go ahead and get started if you guys are ready. And then hopefully we'll have a handful more people join us. Uh, let me share my slides with you guys and get rid of that okay um and we'll go back and forth because we're going to introduce ourselves in a minute but i just wanted to welcome you to our big kickoff webinar for our new weekly series that we're doing through carolina birth trainings um this one is called where do i start right because if we're going to start our webinar series we should figure out where we're starting and where we're going um so this is us. You guys all see that? Uh, we are Carolina Birth Trainings, and I have some of the stuff up there already on the slide that you can find through our organization and through each of us individually. Um, why don't we, Laura, do you want to start and I'll, I'll take this down so they can see our faces bigger. And do you want to tell them a little bit about you and your specialties and then maybe a little bit about Carolina Birth Trainings and what we do? All right, there we go. Um, so I am Laura Nance. We have we have two Lauras. We actually started with two Lauras and a Malia. So we were like this little Oreo cookie that we would always try to make sure that we did for pictures and things. Um, but anyway, we are, I guess, I'm actually going into Carolina Birth Trainings first. Anyway, Carolina Birth Trainings started with, like I said, it was Laura Spies, myself, and Malia Black, and we were all at that time trainers for Kappa, and just saw that we had so many people that were taking trainings and then kind of lost as to what to do next, or they wanted even more meat from their trainings. And so we said, okay, let's, let's fix that. Let's do that. Let's give some business help and let's get some mentorship and let's give some extra trainings that are going to give you, you know, these, these added pieces that you can put into your, your specialties, into your services that you offer to clients and, and students. <clears throat> so we started that back in 2016 and we've gone through all of these kind of molts and changes with the times as we've kind of tried to figure out what works best and kind of also what works uh, with with us. Uh, Malia left us a couple of years ago when she kind of ended up pursuing some other things. So we've done some different, we've done webinars, we've done monthly webinars and we were talking and we had so many ideas for some webinars for the next couple months that we were like, okay, we can't do this with a monthly webinar thing. We have way too many ideas. So we decided to jump in and go ahead and do weekly webinars for the next few months. And then we're also going to do some challenges, which I know we're going to talk about that more later, but just really wanted to, you know, this year's been rough. This year's been rough on, on everybody. We've got, you know, all kinds of different levels of roughness just from the, you know, from COVID and lockdown and social unrest and social pressure, pressures and the political climate and everything has just been so hard. And... So we just really wanted to kind of 
help lift everybody up at the end of 2020 and give everybody kind of a, a boost for starting 2021. So that's kind of that. Uh, me personally, I've been in the birth world for a little bit, uh, right around 20 years, a little over 20 years. And uh, I have I have lots of certification initials behind my name, um, labor doula, childbirth educator, postpartum doula, lactation educator, new parent educator, pregnancy fitness educator, and then a lot of, uh, I'm also a personal trainer with lots of different certifications that apply specifically to uh, diastasis and the pelvic floor. So still staying within this realm of women's health for, for that. Uh, but really, I, I'm, 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 my focus really now is postpartum. I am a very big advocate for all things after the baby is born. That actually really includes preparing for it before the baby is born. But that's, that's my thing is new moms, new babies, new families, new parents, new everything and how we can prepare for that and support that best. And so um, I'm also, you know, I've been training for Kappa since 2005 and the director slash advisor of the postpartum doula program and the new parent educator program for Kappa. And I've been doing that since the beginning of 2014. So I, as I'm going along, I'm realizing I'm one of those really old dinosaurs, um, but I try really hard to stay current. So anyway. Um, excited everybody is here and really excited that you guys will be joining us over the next couple months as we do these weekly webinars and as we do these challenges to help you personally and in your business. Yay. Thank you. That's funny. You were thinking dinosaur. I was thinking busy. <laughs> yeah. Laura is very busy. She always has something awesome going on. I try to keep up. Um, Okay, so let me come back to my um, slides here. My name is Laura Spies, so I'm the other Laura, as I have frequently been called. <laughs> um, I am started out as a labor doula and a childbirth educator, and um, then ended up training with Kappa for those two certifications as well. So now I train labor doulas and I train childbirth educators to teach classes. Um, and so I've been, I like to say, I've been teaching teachers how to teach for the last five or five or six years. Um, and then out of that, or actually kind of alongside as I was following that birth path, I also dove into um, a lot of herbal medicine, natural health, nutrition, kind of that whole world. Uh, and, and I've been able to blend those together with some nutrition and wellness counseling, uh, both individually and teaching classes and mentoring people in that as well. So um, those are my areas of expertise, focusing on women's health in various ways. Um, and in addition to that, just lifelong love of nutrition and of wellness and of babies. I have five babies myself, so that sort of moved me into that that area. So that's been really fun. Um, and then a couple other things you can see on here. We do offer Kappa trainings between the two of us. We offer every training that Kappa has um, in the Carolina area and right now online as well. And we do advanced trainings and then webinars like these. Laura also does, I, I, I can't remember Laura if you mentioned your business coaching, yeah. um, does one-on-one -on -one business coaching as well. And then I also have a collection of business form downloads on my site. So we have tons of resources for people and we're excited to be able to share those and help people build their businesses um, and help them and help their clients at the same time. So I'm gonna jump into this, but um, if you guys have questions or comments or um, anything you wanna share, you can go ahead and type that in the chat box. And then at the end, we'll go to the chat box and we'll answer any of the questions that are in there. So um, feel free to do that while we're talking. And then we'll go in and try and get through all those questions at the end. That's my favorite part because you guys think of stuff that I was like, oh, I meant to talk about that or I hadn't even thought about talking about that. So um, type in any questions that you have. We are gonna talk about where do we start? And then we're gonna talk about kind of this webinar series and, and what it's gonna be like. So 
these are four things we're going to look at first. Our world, what's going on, how it impacts us, how it impacts our clients, and how it has impacted our business and how it's going to impact our business moving forward. I don't really probably need to spend a lot of time here because we're all living it. You guys know what's been happening in our world. Like Laura was saying, it's, it's a different place than it was a year ago. Uh, we have a lot of uncertainty. We don't know what it's going to be like in 2021. We don't know what it's going to be like next month. <laughs> uh, and there has been a lot happening in our world and in our country and for a lot of us in our hometowns. Uh, we see fighting, we see violence, we see fear, we may be experiencing fear. There's a lot of fear in our world and in our communities right now. And that leads to stress, right? So much stress about the unknown um, and about the known, about what we know is going on around us um, and not feeling like we have any control over it. There's also more isolation now than there's ever been. We have more people who are isolated, who can't reach out for services, who can't reach out for support, who can't reach out for friends in the way that they could in the past. And we also have a lot of people um, in our circles who are dealing with loss in a new way. So, and I have to tell you, I was looking for a picture to put on this slide and even looking for pictures was stressing me out. <laughs> I saw this picture and I was like, I love it. And yet there's something so stressful about it. Isn't it cool? But I'm like, there's yeah, so many people in that city. <laughs> but yeah, I love that. Uh, so stress, right? And how does that impact us? All differently, but we're all impacted by it somehow. So we're all somewhere kind of on this spectrum. I don't think there's anybody who's just skating through this unscathed. I think everyone's been impacted in some way. Uh, and I have a friend who likes to say, whenever this topic comes up, she's like, it's the boat thing. It's the boat analogy. You know, we're all in the same storm, but we're in different boats. And so the same events are happening in the world that we just talked about, but it's impacting each of us at a different level and in different ways. And so we're somewhere on the spectrum between full out just fear, or we are just, we prefer denial because it's too hard to face. And I think most of us are probably somewhere in that middle section, just dealing with that underlying level of uncertainty and stress, anxiety, depression, but we still have to carry on. So we're pushing forward, we're doing our daily things we need to do, we're caring for our kids or our families or our friends, ourselves, hopefully, um, but we have that underlying stress and anxiety that's always going on. And then how does this affect our clients? We're thinking about these families that we work with or that we're wanting to work with. They're experiencing the same thing, plus planning to have a baby. So they have this added component that they are having to deal with. Um, how, do you, how do you think that's going to affect planning for the baby, right? Go ahead and type some things into the chat box. Let me see if I can get my chat box up without, I have to shrink it so I can see it. Go ahead and type some things into the chat box. What do you think, um, how is that going to affect an expectant family planning for their birth, preparing for their birth, the labor itself and the birth, um, postpartum, lactation, any resources that they need, follow-up care, Let me click out here and see if I can see my chat box. Is everybody being shy? Or did I give too many examples and I stole yours? Feeling higher responsibility. Yep, not only for themselves, but now you have this baby that you have to protect. That's a lot of pressure. Three families, Laura said she had three families reach out this week because of depression and anxiety. I'm so glad they reached out. Yes. They don't realize what resources are available to them. And that is so true. We're all still here. But a lot of times people don't, they're not aware that we're still working, that we're still here to help them or don't know what online resources there are and difficulty making decisions. Yep. And that's something that comes out of stress, comes out of anxiety, it comes out of postpartum depression, um, that sort of freezing up, locking up and not being able to make choices. 
Um, that can be part of just our daily stress reaction, but it also can be um, part of postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety. Recently was with a client that could not be with their twins for five days because they were COVID positive. That is heartbreaking. Yeah, Laura and I are both like, oh, mm -mm. I can't imagine. It's not okay. Mm -mm. So it's a rough time. I think we can agree, right? We've never seen anything quite like this before um, for ourselves, for our clients, and for our relationship with them and how we work with them. So, <clears throat> so many buttons, you guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, what does this mean for our businesses? Just like we're all on that spectrum, right? We're kind of on a spectrum with our businesses too, right? Some of us, we've been doing this for years. Wait, let me start where my top of my list is. I just started talking. So some of us just started. Some of you guys I know just got trained in the last six to nine months. Um, so some of us are brand new and we're trying to launch this business and we really want to help people because we know what kind of situation they're in. But how do you do it? How do you do it when things are constantly changing or we keep expecting them to change and they don't? What do we plan for? Um, some of us have been working. You know, some of us have been doing it for years. Some of us have been doing it maybe a couple years and we had been building our business and then everything slowed down or maybe totally stopped when the pandemic hit. How do we recover from that? Um, there's also this thing that I've seen I've been doing it long enough now, Laura might, might be able to back this up. Um, whenever there's a major political change or there's any uncertainty going on politically in the world or economically, socially in the world, my business slows down because people don't want to invest. They don't want to spend money on anything else. They don't, everybody kind of tends to, to circle up and stop reaching out for things. Um, so we have that going on right now too, on top of everything else. And then there's this shift of everything going virtual. And at first, um, people kind of like waited to see if it was gonna pass. Maybe I won't have to go virtual. Um, and then there was this rush of everybody kind of trying to get into it. And now there's this sense of, I'm, I'm tired, I'm tired of it. We wanna get back to the way life was. Um, but this virtual thing is here and it's, it's here to stay in some form or fashion. So figuring out how to do that. How do we do our jobs virtually? Can we do our jobs virtually? We can, we're gonna talk about that. Um, and then finding that new balance. Some of us have always worked at home. Some of us have not. Some of us do most of our work outside of the house, either whether it's meeting with clients at their houses or meeting out in public places, or some of us have an office that we go to that maybe you can't go to anymore. And now we're at home, or maybe we used to work at home while our kids were at school and now they're also at home. And so we're trying to balance in a whole new way. Uh, and we're about what, two months into the school year now. Um, I still don't feel like I have it settled right? It's, it's still different. And we've always homeschooled, but it's still different. Um, and then there may be some of us who are just thinking, how do I come out of the fetal position in the first place? I am in my closet, <laughs> in my fuzzy robe, eating my ice cream, and I'm happy here, but I know I need to reemerge. <laughs> we need to make a plan for 2021 because this can't go on forever. So wherever you are on that spectrum, we have ideas for you and we have a plan for you and we're gonna help you get to where you wanna be. But this is where it starts. All of those things we just talked about, it feels super overwhelming, right? But this is where it has to start. It has to start with taking care of ourselves first. And this is the, I don't know if you guys can see it on the screen that you're on, but this is the in-flight manual instructions. Um, about putting your oxygen mask on first. And I know everybody's heard this, uh, but it's, in this case, it is 100% true. If we jump to trying to take care of our clients before we take care of ourselves, we have nothing left to give. So we need to make sure that we are mentally in good shape, physically in good shape, um, relationally with our families in good shape, and then we have something to give to our clients. And the things that we've learned, we can pass on to our clients as well. So this is where these webinars come in. Uh, this is a topic that Laura and I have been talking on for years in different forms and fashion. So we have been talking about self-care and about nutrition and about fitness and about wellness and about building your business and 
doing things online and how to make a plan for your business and how to achieve that. So all of these topics are things that we have been doing for years and we've seen so many people move successfully from point A to point B. And so we wanted to bring that opportunity now into this new setting as well. So we're gonna have two different types of webinars. That's where we're starting. And then Laura was hinting, there's some more fun things coming later. Once we get into 2021, we're gonna have some group challenges and some different things. Um, but for now, we're starting with two different types of webinars. We are gonna have some free ones that are some interesting topics. They're gonna be more like this, just sort of chatting, you know, hitting the surface of the really good information. Sometimes it's an introduction to our monthly topic. Sometimes it's a bit of extra information that we just thought you guys might be really interested in. Sometimes it's gonna be things that I just really wanna talk about because I like them. So at the end of the month, you'll see we have one on the parasympathetic nervous system. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. So thankfully it fits in with taking care of ourselves and our health, um, but really it's just something I really like talking about. <laughs> so that's why we're doing that one. And then we're gonna have some paid webinars as well. And those are gonna be more classroom style. Um, so we'll, you know, whether it's, we've got the slides or we're doing the, you know, Laura's gonna do one about, she'll, she'll tell you all about it, but she's gonna do one this month that's gonna be more kind of hands-on um, teaching techniques, um, but it's gonna be more in depth, our paid ones will. And there are going to be continuing education credits available. So if you're already certified and you need that. Um, so what the paid ones are really, is their topics that we've taught as advanced trainings in person in the past, most of them. And now we're offering them to you in this kind of condensed webinar format that's really easy for everyone to access, no matter where you are. So here's what we're getting into. Um, let's see, uh, this is where we are. Laura and I are gonna kind of go back and forth and tell you a little bit about the ones that we're doing so you have an idea of what's coming up. Um, we're gonna start with ourselves. So November is just kind of getting stuff started, getting conversations starting, giving some kind of overview topics. And then December, we're gonna really dive into different ways to care for ourselves and how we can use that information for our clients later on. And then in January and February, we're gonna move into talking about our businesses because it's so tempting to go, my business is struggling. I'm gonna focus all my energy on the business at the expense of my mental health, my relationships with my family and my friends my physical health, I'm just gonna pour my stress energy into my business. And that's not, it's, it's not successful. It's not sustainable. Um, I've seen a lot of people burn out doing that. So we're gonna make sure that we are in shape, fit, solid. I mean, you know, not like my abs are not gonna be six pack abs by January, but you know, we'll work on that. <laughs> but make sure that we are solid um, and ready to move forward and, and pour into our clients and into their families. So November, where do I start? You're here right now. So congratulations, you've already taken that first step. And then next week, I'm gonna be talking about um, some basic nutrition ideas and some herbs that are great for immune support because we're entering this kind of cold and flu season on top of coronavirus, which is not a season. <laughs> um, so any way that we can help boost our immune systems and keep ourselves more healthy going into this and give ourselves kind of stack the deck in our favor, right? Um, and that's also going to lead to better health overall, because it's all healthy foods. And then at the end of the month, I'm going to do that parasympathetic nervous system topic that I was talking about. The parasympathetic nervous system activates your relaxation response, opposite of stress. And it's not something that we can control necessarily. It's not like, you know, I tell my hand, pick up this glass of water. It's not like that. But there are things we can do to flip the switch and to kick it in gear. So we're gonna talk about how we can do that to lower our stress hormones. And this is something I use with clients all the time. So this will help you and them. Laura, do you wanna talk for a minute about your weighted dolls webinar? Um, so anybody who has taken an in-person training with me, you you have hung out with, with these guys. This is just one of my like 12. Um, there's one hanging around on a mom back there too. Um, but these are my, my like tried and true teaching assistants. And I love these guys so much, but if we are going to really help parents to learn the, the skills of, I mean, even from changing a diaper to baby wearing to soothing a baby, 
we, we can do it a lot better if we actually create that muscle memory. And for the muscle memory to really work, it, it needs to be more realistic than just a stuffed doll. But if you've ever tried to price any of these like professionally weighted dolls, they are either one, really, really, really expensive, or two, really just not that cute, um, to be very honest. Um, so I am going to go through the process that I personally use for making these dolls, for taking these dolls and weighting them. Uh, these are the ones that I really, really love are these ones by JC Toys and they're the, the Law Baby. Um, I have, like I said, I have like 12 of them. They come in multiple different um, ethnic babies. So we have a, a Latino baby, we have an African-American baby, we have an Asian baby, and then we have um, this little guy. So they, we have lots of different ones to choose from. And I have like two of each because they're just all so, so cute. They're beautiful. And they're like 20 to 25 bucks. So um, anyway, so we're going to talk about just how to make these weighted so that they feel really realistic. And um, yeah, this guy right here, I keep saying guy because he is actually usually my guy. Um, and I stuck him in a pink sleeper right now. So anyway, um, but from head down to butt, this butt is just absolutely, it feels like a real baby butt. It is so fantastic. So anyway, we're going to go through the steps together of how to do that. So if you want to join us and make a real lifelike weighted doll and save yourself like $150, then um, come on the 23rd. And I think it's at three. I, think I did it at three, so. Awesome, I can't wait. I don't have one. I've always been jealous of Laura's baby dolls. So I'm gonna come learn to make, how, make my own. <laughs> All right, so that's November. And then in December, we're gonna really focus deeper on that self-care. So Laura's gonna kick us off. Um, do you wanna talk about your two in December? Sure. So we're gonna start with just kind of this recovery from 2020 because it has been really an emotionally different, difficult and physically because our emotions and you know our, our bodies listening to our mind. So everything that's going on has really affected us emotionally, mentally, and physically. So we're going to talk about some, just some ways to really easily take care of ourselves. And like Laura said, the, you know, oxygen mask illustration, or sometimes I talk about it like a, a vehicle, you know, we're, 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 our bodies are kind of like a vehicle that we're taking all of this really good information and these skills and things, and we're serving these families that we work with and we're serving our own families. But if we aren't taking care of the engine and changing the oil and filling it up with gas and putting new tires on it, uh, then we can't take this to other people, to our clients, to our students, to our families. So we have to you know, really do regular maintenance on ourselves, just like we do our cars so that, so that we don't fall apart. And so we're going to talk about some really easy ways to do it. It's not as hard as it seems. So we're going to do that. And then I'm also going to be talking about restoring your core and floor. I, this is something I'm incredibly passionate about finding people who, you know, have their, their babies are 14 years old and they're, they think that it's, you know, oh, well, I'm destined to pee sneeze. I'm going to pee when I sneeze for the rest of my life because that's just what having babies does to you. No, it's, it's not normal. It, it's normal during pregnancy. There's kind of really no way about around it. You can't sneeze during pregnancy and have like this 15 pounds of, you know, uterus and amniotic fluid and baby pushed down on your bladder and, and not pee is going to happen but you shouldn't be peeing beyond somewhere between the three to six month mark after your postpartum, you shouldn't be peeing. So as birth workers, a lot of times, again, we don't take care of ourselves physically. So we're gonna talk about just how kind of restoring our floor and core is actually very functional. It's really, really, really important to everyday life. When I leaned over to pick this guy up, um, I had to use my core, but so often we don't. So we're gonna talk about just 
some like real easy hacks for working with within that parameter of ourselves. Awesome. I'm super excited about that too. I was so excited, Laura, when you said that you were going to start studying more into that and, and look, doing those certifications because there's not enough of that. There just aren't enough professionals doing that. And it's so important. And you're right. Most people just think, oh, it's normal. It's just how it is. Nope. Um, and then in the middle of the month, I'm going to talk about how to teach nutrition. Um, and it's, it's actually going to end up helping us, but it's also going to be a way of teaching this information to our clients and our students. So I'm going to teach you some nutrition, and then I'm also going to teach you how to teach it because I love teaching teachers how to teach. Um, this is a, a thing that's, and it's not just nutrition, actually. The whole title is how to teach nutrition and stress reduction to your students and clients. That was too long to fit in the graphic. <laughs> um, but it's such a huge topic and it's so important and it should be part of what we teach to every single expectant parent, nutrition and stress reduction, because those two things can have some of the biggest impact on pregnancy health, baby health, baby weight at birth, um, when the mom goes into labor, um, how quickly the mom recovers from the labor, how quickly the baby is able to gain weight. It can have an impact on the breastfeeding relationship. It can have an impact on postpartum recovery. It is huge. So this is something that we should be teaching in all of our classes, all of our meetings with our clients. Um, but there's not a ton of resources on how to teach it. And the ones that are out there are really outdated. So this is another one I'm super, super excited about um, because I'm gonna teach you how to teach nutrition without ever counting a single calorie. Tune in to find out why. And remember, if you guys have questions, type them in the chat box and we'll answer those. Um, so these are all three um, paid advanced trainings, super top-notch in-depth topics. Um, and the nutrition one, I'm gonna also include two PDF activities that you can do with your students or with your clients, whether you're on person or in line, in person or online. And then January, we're gonna switch gears after we have taken care of ourselves and we know that we are managing our own nutrition and care and health and wellness, then we're gonna start looking towards building our business. Uh, and the first way to do that is to make our plan. So Laura's gonna start out with a plan, but I, I snuck in a fun one. This is another one of my, I just think it's fun and it'd be really fun to talk about. It's called 10 Guaranteed Ways to Look Unprofessional. And these are things that I see all the time, not just in our profession, from professionals kind of across the board. And they're all things that I may or may not have done at some point. They're really easy, kind of little mistakes to make, but it leaves a really bad impression on our clients or our potential clients or students. Um, so join us for that one to see if these are anything, any of the things that you might accidentally be doing and they're quick changes to make you look much more professional in your client's eyes and then Laura is going to rock out the whole rest of the month with her business webinars so take it Laura all right so yeah just goal setting and planning uh, sometimes we have and I'm famous for it I have 9,000 different pieces of paper and sticky notes all over my entire house because every time I think of something I jot it down and um, but then it's like the how do you take all of this and make a plan out of it so we're going to talk about how to make goals that are our smart goals. Um, and that means that they're attainable and how to then break them down and say, make a plan for it. We're going to talk about rocking interviews because that's really important. You, a lot of times there's the, you know, multiple people applying for the same job and what is going one of the things that's going to make you stand out is your interview so we're going to talk about how to do amazing interviews we'll do some mock interviews um, i think laura and i are going to demo a couple of them and then um we're going to let you guys do practice some and then tips for taxes i did work in a tax office for about 14 years um, so I am not a professional tax preparer, but I do know some of the things that are um, need to know for self-employment. So we'll talk about just some of those, so some of those basic tips. And I actually have been communicating just over the weekend, this just happened uh, with somebody who 
reached out to me who is a uh, tax preparer and she just was like, hey, just wanted to say hi if you need any, you know, anything to share with some of your um, dual students and things like that. And I was like, oh, yes, okay. So um, I might get her to hop in on it or we might do a live with her or something like that. That's just kind of new, just found that out. So Laura didn't know about it. Anyway, but- That's awesome. <laughs> Best speakers. All right, and then February, because we've worked on ourselves and we've worked on business kind of details. And now let's take it to our clients. So we're gonna talk about different ways to work virtually, regardless of which type of birth profession we're in. How do we take that online and still do it really well? Um, and before we start those topics, I'm gonna take you through a quick little free webinar on what's holding you back, um, because I hear from a lot of professionals, not just in the birth field, uh, kind of across the board, I hear it's the pandemic, it's holding me back. The pandemic shut down my business, the pandemic. But the things that are happening or not happening in the business could be overcome. And really what I'm seeing is maybe stress and anxiety or a fear of failure in this new world or imposter syndrome. So we're going to talk about fear of failure and imposter syndrome and what those are um, and kind of could this be having an impact on how our businesses are progressing or not progressing and knock that out. We'll knock that out of the way first and then we'll focus on now that the pandemic has changed our world, how do we take our services to our clients? How do we meet them where they are without losing any of the good stuff? Um, Laura, I don't know how, how in depth how, how in depth do you want to go in, in talking about what we're going to do there? I mean, I feel like this, these ones are pretty basic. We're going to, you know, just kind of break them down and talk about some ways to still do, you know, postpartum support, how to do it, how to market it, how to do it. And Laura and I are team teaching the education one since we're both educators. And we'll talk about some ways to do that. Yeah, and we've both been teaching online a lot this year. <laughs> and we were doing it before, but we've done a ton this year. So we've learned lots of tips and tricks and um, even how to do the hands-on stuff, you know, the um, labor positions and, and newborn care and even the hands-on things online really well. So we'll share all that with you. Super fun. And then we have a ton more topics coming um, that are going to be added to the calendar as we go along. So these are some of the other advanced classes that we've done in the past or um, just topics that we've heard from people that they are interested in. Um, and if there is a topic that you're like, man, I really wish somebody would address this, let us know, send us an email uh, and we'll see if it's something that's in our wheelhouse. We are happy to talk about it um, or to do a little bit of research and then talk about it and to help you guys in any areas that you're struggling. So here are some of the other things that are coming up. I'll just let you look at it. We have some website things. Um, Laura did a talk at the Kappa conference about how to listen so that others will speak and really good communication skills with your clients. And I learned a ton from it. So she's offered to share that in this setting as well. And I'm super excited. So lots of fun things coming up. But I didn't wanna leave you with nothing after all this, right? We gotta do some fun things too. So. We came to talk about this series and kick it off and all that, but there always has to be some fun things at the end. It's like the, the dessert at the end, right? And isn't that picture fun? I want my kitchen to look like that. <laughs> uh, and these are gonna be in the PDF that I'm sending out to everybody who had registered in advance for the training. So um, you'll have all these and you can take a screenshot if you want, but um, I'm gonna send you the PDFs. Uh, and I even, I went overboard, I got excited and I made a color version and a black and white. So you could print it out for your clients if you want. Um, this one is more for you. These are some of my favorite herbs, some of my favorite teas. And I started just with teas and I thought you need some essential oil stuff too. So I, I kept adding more and more to it. <laughs> so some fun things as we're preparing ourselves to talk about taking care of ourselves. Here's some little sneak peeks. One of my favorite, favorite blends for nighttime for sleep is this blend of chamomile, passion flower, and hops. It is super relaxing, but mild. Um, so you can still function if you need to, but I love it at night and it really helps me relax enough to fall asleep at night if I've had a stressful day or if my mind is racing. 
Um, and this is not one that I would give to clients specifically. Passion flower and hops are not generally recommended for pregnancy, um, but this would be a great one for us if you're not pregnant yourself. Um, a client version honestly could be just chamomile. They can make it a little extra strong if they need to, but chamomile is very effective. It's an incredibly effective herb, but it's also super safe. So it's one of my favorites. I put it in almost everything because it's great for youngest to the oldest person. Um, there's really no contraindications, no risks associated with it, unless you're allergic to it, like Laura. Laura's allergic to chamomile. Um, so unless you have allergies in the ragweed family, um, generally chamomile works for almost everybody. And another one, or you can blend like that. You what? I'm just weird like that with so many things. <laughs> You're not the only one. There are others. Um, and ashwagandha is a fantastic herb in general. It's an adaptogen. And we are going to talk about that next week. What are adaptogens? What do they do? Why are they so wonderful? Um, and how can we use them during this stressful time? Um, so that's when the ashwagandha root, you can mix it into a tea or the chamomile on its own is fine as well. And then at the bottom, holy basil is just a fun one. Its nickname is yoga in a cup. It's just nice and calming, but it's not sleepy. So you can drink it during the day and it's okay during pregnancy too, as long as it's just a cup or two. I wouldn't drink three, four, five, six cups a day when I was pregnant with it. There's just not enough research on it. Um, but you know, having a cup here and there would be fine. So that's another one. It's also called Tulsi and it's pretty easy to find. Um, you may have to go to a health food store in the natural section of the grocery store, but there are quite a few companies that make just Tulsi tea bags or loose tea. It's pretty easy to find. And then the essential oil blend is, this is actually what I used last night. So I thought I'm gonna write this in here. Um, for us, I like to mix clary sage and lavender for my kids at bedtime. And for me, I like a little sweet orange in there too, because I think clary sage smells weird. So I like the orange to kind of balance it out, but it's very relaxing, incredibly relaxing. So that mix, and you can change the amounts however you like, um, but that's the, the scent that I like the best and you get all three, but the more clary sage, the quicker my, my kids fall to sleep. <laughs> so I usually mix clary sage and lavender even. Um, but I like the orange in there. For clients, I don't use clary sage um, just because it is widely used by midwives to change their labor pattern. And I don't want to be seen as attempting to change a labor pattern in any way. Um, so because it has that connotation with it, I choose not to use it with my clients. Instead, um, I replace it with bergamot, which has the most research behind it for anti-anxiety. And it smells fantastic. It smells like Earl Grey tea. It's that's the one I carry in my purse with me everywhere. So you could do that for yourself too, if you don't have clear sage or if you also think it smells weird. Um, a mix of bergamot, sweet orange, and lavender is also fantastic. It smells amazing, refreshing, and it's calming. Uh, on the PDF, it'll tell you amounts, suggested amounts for that nighttime tea at the top up there. Um, you could mix it equal parts, hops isn't my favorite flavor. So I tend to have less of that. So on the, on the handout, I'm going to send you, I think it says three parts chamomile, two parts passion flower, one part hops. That's my preference, but you're welcome to add or subtract anything um, to meet your taste. And that's the great thing about these teas is that they're all safe enough. We can do that. And drinking it as a tea is a great safe way to use most herbs. And then one more. Um, slow, controlled, deep breaths. I thought I had a different slide. There it is. I made a better one. Sorry, you saw my, that was my practice slide. So here's my better one. Isn't that pretty? Slow the breath, calm the mind. And in our parasympathetic nervous system webinar, we're going to talk about why this works. Um, but for now, I just thought it would be fun for us to end our webinar doing this together. So this is just a slow patterned kind of breathing. And if you Google this, or you've probably heard people talking about all different kinds of ways, you know, you can do count to four in and four out or four in and eight out or four, you know, four in, hold it, four out, hold it, or five, three, seven, like there's all these different things, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's not one that's right and one that's wrong. Everybody kind of has their favorite. This is my favorite. The key is to slow down the breath, to take a deep abdominal breath. And that slow exhale is important. And you'll find out why 
at that other webinar. Uh, we'll talk about how the mechanics of that works. But for now, we're going to do it this way. We're going to breathe in. If you guys will do it with me, I can't see you on my screen. So I'm just really hoping you guys are doing it with me and I'm not doing it on my own. <laughs> so we're going to count in. And we're not going to count in. We're going to count to four while we breathe in. Keep everything nice and relaxed. And we're going to focus on the bottom of the rib cage, expanding like a balloon. And then we're going to hold it for four, still nice and relaxed. And then we're going to slowly release the breath. You can s or for a count of eight. And we're going to do it four times. Okay, so do it with me. We're going to inhale one, two, three, four. Hold it. Two, three, four. And exhale one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's hard the first time. Let's try it again. Breathe in. Hold it nice and relaxed. And exhale. Third time, breathe in. Shoulders relaxed. Hold it. Exhale. Feel your arms and shoulders get heavy. Last time, breathe in. Hold it. And breathe out. Nice and heavy and relaxed. Nice. You guys feel a little bit calmer? I do. <laughs> um, this is my favorite thing to do. It's so easy. You can do it at any time during the day. It's gonna lower your stress hormones. It's gonna help calm. It slows your heart rate. Um, it can lower your blood pressure. If you can do that five minutes a day, you're already on your way towards better health. So keep this, keep some, this tucked away. Laura, did you have something some to say? Research. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, there's some research with this about um, helping you go to sleep as well. If you're struggling with like shutting down your brain and falling asleep, that, I mean, this is actually evidence-based that if you do this uh, several times that it, will help you to go to sleep faster. And it's one of those things that kind of is like, you know, okay, I'm going to do it five times. You probably aren't going to make it five times before you fall asleep. So, um, yeah, it's fantastic. I've taught it to all my kids. And when they come in, I can go to sleep. I'll ask them, did you do the breathing? And it's amazing. Oh, I need you to do it with me, mom. <laughs> of course. That's always more fun. <laughs> then yeah. I get up to very sage and lavender. <laughs> All right, so that's all we have for you today. I can't even see my clock, so I don't even know how we're doing on time. But I'm so excited that you guys were here to join us today and talk about all these things. I'll kick this off. Um, next week, we have the nutrition and herbs for immune support, and I'm going to have some recipes with that. They're going to be really fun. We're going to talk about which nutrients to look for in food that helps boost the immune system and what foods to find them in. We're going to talk about eating for comfort versus eating for health and can it be both? Um, and then we will talk about those adaptogenic herbs that I had mentioned earlier and ways to use them this winter. So you can look forward to that next week. I hope you guys all join us. We have already, I know, and a lot of you signed up for both of them at the same time. Um, if you have not registered yet, you can go over to carolinabirthtrainings.com and sign up there, same place you signed up for this one. Um, and then I will see you next week at two o'clock. I'm super excited about that one. I've been working on the recipes this weekend and I've been, they're really good. <laughs> I've been making them this weekend and they're delicious. So I can't wait for you guys to see those. I mean, it's breakfast. It's my favorite meal of the day. I could eat it all day, breakfast foods. All right, so let me um, shrink this and I am going to turn off the live feeds. And then we can have a little question and answer if you guys have some questions. Lydia, can you stop my Instagram? Hi, Instagram people. Um, and I will stop.
stop the Facebook stream and stop recording. Sweet.